The Bengals offseason is in full swing. Rookie minicamp is over, and the veterans, well, they're practicing with the rookies this week. Let's kick off our series with Ted Karras. What better time as Ted Karras joins us regularly here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk as he continues to promote the number one hat in the game, the Cincy hat, the Cincy hat gear at the CincyHat.com. 100% of the proceeds go to Village of Marici, where it's making an impact for so many adults with special needs. And we're going to get more from Ted Karras on the impact of the Cincy hat, plus thoughts on the schedule, thoughts on the rookie named Juan Drago. Yes, I threw Ted Karras a curveball. Plus, I asked him about Jonah Williams, Orlando Brown Jr., and so much more in episode one of our regular chats with Bengals center, Ted Karras. It's time to welcome him in. Ted Karras is with us now on behalf of the CincyHat.com. Ted, this is the the first of many interviews you're you're stuck doing with me throughout the 2023 season. Uh, I appreciate the time as always. How you doing? Oh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're starting our relationship now. It's gonna be it's a big year ahead, James. It is a big year ahead, and th- the schedule came out this week, and and let's start there because it gets so much hype. And in my business, in my line of work, my goal is to always get it early so I can have my ducks in a row when the schedule actually does release at eight o'clock. I think I can peel back the curtain and say that. Not that I want to leak it because I don't really care about leaking it, but just to be able to record and react and everything because it's such a big deal. Are you surprised at how big it's gotten? And do you care about when you're playing these opponents? Because obviously, you know, the opponents long before. Yeah, the the schedule is actually out. Well, I think the NFL does a great job of creating a year long spectacle for the league, and we have you now we have draft, now we have schedule. We have a little bit of a drought now with, with at least news wise. There'll be some practices though, and then you know start up in camp. But for me, I'm a three games out guy. I like to look at the first three. Um, really, I think the schedule release is more for the fans setting their schedule. I'll be on the bus and playing regardless. You know, knock on wood, going there. So. Uh, about three games. I, I split the season up into quarters. So first three or four is, is what I'm really focused on. All right. Well, let's focus on them. So yeah. you set me up, set me up perfectly because you start, let's just focus on the first two in the division, back to back AFC North games in Cleveland. That's a, a short plane ride, but certainly going to be a chaotic environment uh, on September 10th. And, and then you come home for the Ravens. It's a pretty tough start. I would say for, for any team to play two divisional opponents in, in the first two weeks. Yeah, and our division is very tough. I, you it know, is. I think everyone in the division last year split with each other, so this is a there's a lot of parity in our division. Um, very, very high competitive environment. It's going to be Cleveland. We have to do better than we did last year in Cleveland as well. What was? Can, can you draw anything from that the the environment or anything like that, or was that just self inflicted? Because after that, you guys won ten straight, but that was kind of the turning point. I remember driving home. And it was like, all right, they're four and four. Where are they going to go? And, and obviously, you guys went on a, a heck of a run and, and came within a, a few plays of the Super Bowl. Yeah, we. I think it, that was just a thing. We have to play better. We didn't play very good in, in Cleveland and kind of got uh, – the game got away from us Halloween night. Um, you know, not much – there's not one thing you can pinpoint on that. We just have to be, you know, better prepared and perform better when the lights come on. So uh, exciting that we get to go there week one uh, and redeem ourselves. Later this week, you're going to to the Holy Grail, and I, I wanted to plug this multiple times throughout the interview. You're going to be at the Holy Grail at four o'clock with that hat right there, and obviously the CincyHat.com for all of the gear. But a special edition Reds hat. Orlando Brown Jr. is going to be there. Kelsey Conway is going to be there. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, next Friday, 4 p.m. Uh, May 19th, before Reds versus Yankees, the start of the series, we'll be selling. Uh, these special edition hats. We also have a white and red version. Um, just right at the Holy Grail. We're going to do a live podcast. We're going to hang out, sell some hats. Obviously, 100% to charity. And uh, it's going to be a fun time, man. I think everyone's uh, – I really can't wait for everyone to meet Orlando and get to know him and what he's about because he's a huge addition to this team and very, very happy that uh, he's on the squad. I, I love, obviously, the, the charity aspect. And it seems like the – the Cincy hats have, have kind of taken uh, the city by storm did last year. So I know a lot of you 
might want the new Reds hat that they released. Get a Cincy hat as well, because like Ted said, it goes 100% uh, to charity. And I, I'm digging the red as well. I think it it, it fits. So, uh, yeah, I, I you mentioned Orlando Brown. And I asked him earlier this week because he was talking about you and Cordell, obviously Alex as well, how tight that offensive line room is. Ted, does it feel like you've only been here for a season? Because, you know, 14 months ago is is when you signed, essentially. Yeah. And and you got to town. And it seems like you've you've obviously fit in well, uh, to, to put it lightly. But it also feels like you and the rest of that room is pretty tight. And, and it feels much longer than a year, to me at least. Uh, what it, what it, would you say about that, the closeness of the the that I think it does. Year? It feels more than a year uh you know, one thing I want to take advantage of this year, this is the first time I've been on a team, you know, two years in a row uh, in four years. So, yeah. you know, I've been bouncing around and we have such a great room. Uh, like you said, the relationship and the cool thing about, you know, Cincinnati, sorry, I got something stuck in my eye, is, uh, you know, how great the guys that they bring in are. It's very easy. There's so many leaders, there's so many great personalities, you know, high character men, uh, obviously very uh, elite athletes, but it's easy to be a leader. It's easy to be friends with these guys. And we have, you know, we are continuing to mold our tight knit relationship, you know, Kappa, Cordell, Orlando. Um, you know, we have so many great guys especially in the old line room, but in the entire roster. What does Orlando bring to, to the room? Obviously he's, he's talked with the media, been very willing to do that, has, has discussed his, desire to be a great left tackle in this league. And, and that was part of the reason why he signed in Cincinnati, obviously wants to win Super Bowls, all of those things as well. But so far, and I know it's early, but what have you seen from him and, and why are you so excited about him and having He's him just a, a high energy guy, brings it every single day, um, you know, loves ball, happy to be there, obviously is a, a giant man. And an elite, an elite left tackle, and is a huge pickup for us. Um, he's going to fit in our offense amazing. Culturally, he's going to be a culture driver, uh, a guy that he's going to be vocal in the locker room. I can't wait for you know our relationships all to develop uh, between you know me, him, and Kappa. We have so many great leaders in the O line, and we need to come ready to go come this fall. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I do have to ask because I, I think. Looking at that offensive line room, and offensive line has been such a topic throughout Joe Burrow's tenure, and part of that had to do with Super Bowl 56 before you were in town, obviously, but the right tackle spot. Lel's rehabbing. Obviously, people were really excited about him, and he played through some injuries last year, and, and I thought that the offensive line, when you guys were healthy, you did a heck of a job. And, and Looking at it now, there's a question mark. Could it be Jackson Carmen? Could it be Jonah Williams? Obviously, Lael is coming back a bit. With Jonah, how how awkward is that? Because I'm sure you're excited about Orlando. At the same time, Jonah played through an injury last year as well. And yes. I'm sure that's that's a bit uncomfortable for him after playing through that dislocated knee to, to essentially be replaced at left tackle and potentially play right tackle this season. And that's part of the business. It, it happens a lot. Um, yeah. You know, every team's going to be different. Every it's a yearly proposition. Uh, we come together for about seven months, try to win a championship, and then uh, you know these teams and organizations reshuffle the deck. But uh, I think that obviously Jonah coming in would be you know he, he we want him to be our right tackle, but we have a lot of competition. Um, it's going to be it's a good problem to have. We have a deep room. We have a serious room. We have a lot of great players. And I'm excited to see, you know, how it all unfolds. Have you talked to him at all, Jonah, this offseason? Have you been able to or is he? I have, uh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing good. I think everything will come together here shortly. Um, and, you know, hope we can get to work, you know, mini camp and OTA, as OTAs come up when we get on the field, we have uh, our full squad together. Getting on the field is obviously something – that you'll do with some familiar faces, and then this week with some new faces with all the rookies, 13 undrafted free agents, eight draft picks as well. No one in the offensive line room, but but certainly some draft picks on offense, a first-round defensive lineman that you'll be able to, to evaluate, corner safety as well. What What's that like getting to know a, a new draft class? You've obviously had to do that on, on multiple teams, the Patriots, Dolphins, and, and now – here in Cincinnati for a second straight season. What's that process like? 
Well, we, I met a few of them on Friday. Uh, I really like Miles. He seems like a serious, uh, you know, big time player. So, what? What? I think we have some great additions. Chase Brown, uh, Illinois yeah. alum. He was the best part of Illinois' offense for, you know, yeah. his career there. So, I think we got a home run hitter in that. But, you know, we'll see how these guys come in and assimilate. You know, you, they're coming to work. It's a new, obviously, a new profession. Uh, they have to develop into football professionals. Now you're no longer an amateur athlete, and I think, you know, this team especially, but most teams in the NFL, the older guys will help out these younger guys, help them in any way they need. And, you know, we have a great support staff too. So um, we're going to onboard these guys and and hopefully we have some big-time contributors from the draft. Yeah, that would certainly help, right? Get, getting a, yeah. a couple more guys that can be plug-and-play contributors, whether it's yeah. offense or defense. Trivia question, and this might not be fair because it's about a rookie that you might not have met yet, because okay. the guys you met were uh, were were not uh, on that list, or this guy was not on your list of, of guys that you just mentioned. Which rookie, which rookie's real name is Juan Drago? Oh man, well, I have no idea. I've never heard of Juan Drago. <laughs> DJ Turner the second. His okay. real name is Juan Drago. All how right. about that? It, how so, how badass of a name is that? Because I that's, think that's is, probably is that the one closer. word? Yes. It's one word, Juan Drago, but then he flipped yes. it for DJ. Yeah, and, and and I think with DJ Reader and DJ Ivy, the seventh rounder. Yeah, I think there's a chance he goes by Drago. So you you may have a uh, a really badass name at corner that you have to, to Drago mention. the corner. I love that. I'm going to say it to him uh, on Monday. See how he reacts. Yeah, I I I saw that. I'm like, man, he should go by Drago. Like that's absolutely. Is there anything better than that? I'm. I mean, what a what I mean. Everyone knows who Drago was from the Rocky movies, too. So, yeah. it's, I, but I, I've never heard anyone else refer to it until now. So, I think that's a great. Not, it's not even a nickname. That's his name. So that's what I'll be referring to him as. Yeah. Yeah. That, correct. Yeah, that is his name. It's easy to say nickname because it it, it sounds like it because it's such a cool. Yeah. Name and it's not. Um, speaking of nicknames, since we're on the uh, the rookie train, Chuck Sizzle is Charlie Jones's nickname. Do you wow. approve? Do you hate it? What's your instant reaction to that? Well, I, I hope he sizzles if he's going around saying he sizzles. But um, I've met Charlie too. I think that that's an ex- another exciting pickup. My man was in a was in a navy blue track shoot uh, showing up to work. So uh, he seems that he, he looks the part. And uh, I'm yeah, it's going to be interesting now that we all get to see each other move and uh, you know operate in a in a football environment. We've been running and lifting now for a month, so you know, on the field is a little bit more serious. And that's how you get to, that's how you build the, you know, trust in your teammates and have them build their trust in you. Yeah. I don't know if he would call himself Chuck Sizzle, but I know that was, that was his oh, that, name. That was at, at Purdue. At, at Purdue. Nickname? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And when you have 1300 yards, I, I think you get, you get nicknames. So I'm, I'm sure that was part of it. Chuck Sizzle. Sure. Come on, Charlie, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. It could stick, I guess, if he produces, right. That's, that's certainly Absolutely. one that could stick. You can, you can um, call yourself whatever you want and produce. That's, that's right. Um, it, as, as far as rookie minicamp goes for you, it wasn't that long ago. I know you're a veteran in the game, and, and it's uh, overall a pretty young roster, so you're, you're one of the, the older guys in the locker room. But 2016 wasn't that long ago. Has rookie minicamp changed? What, was it was it pretty intense then? What, when you entered the league, obviously you were a, a day three pick trying to prove yourself. Was that – was that different than it is now where it's kind of a, a meet and greet? You get out there, you, you do some drills, and, and you go home and, until Monday? I think it, it goes team to team. I know that, um, you know, what from what I observed, this rookie minicamp was uh, vastly different from when I did it. I think when I was in 2016, the Patriots, they brought in about 40 guys. I mean, it was a full practice out there oh, trying wow. out a ton of guys. Um you know, got you know UDFAs, guys trying to make it. So I think that's very important for you know people trying to make it in the league. But it's team to team. I, I don't believe the Bengals did that. They just kind of had draft picks, a few guys. Um, but not an exciting time. These guys, I congratulated a lot of the guys in the locker room. Told them good luck, and that's you know your first taste. And now they're going out. It's great that you get a little bit of a first taste because on Monday we're going out as a full squad. And, you know, it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit faster. Guys know what they're doing. So, Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting. I'll be there on, on Tuesday covering it, probably bothering you. And then Friday, see, it's a busy week for you because Friday, like like we mentioned, you're going to be at Holy Grail at 4 o'clock 
Make sure you get to the cincyhat.com. 100% of the proceeds for everything sold goes to Village, Village of Marici in Indianapolis. Uh, and anything and you want to add? For some context about where the hat money is going, um, we have – we're funding projects to build 77 more units of apartments for adults with Down syndrome wow. and autism. So this hat money, uh, we're, we're so thankful to the Cincinnati community. Um, they, it, it was like, uh, you know, so much people bought in and we're tripling our footprint uh, of the adults and people in the community we're able to serve. When you, cause I, I know your, your buddy put the hat together and then you, you wore it in an interview and then you're like, Oh, well maybe these are going to be popular. What led you to, to make the decision to, to sell them and be able to help out like that? Because obviously you've helped so many people already. Well, people wore me down asking how they could get it. Um, I brought in and gave out a bunch <laughs> to my teammates and they were, I mean, they wore it in pictures and fans started commenting. And I remember it was after that Browns game. Uh, I mean, we lost and I remember I'm getting hat, you know, questions about hats still and i'm like man we just lost, lost Monday night football you know what i'm gonna sell it but it's gonna be for charity and uh, the the response has been unbelievable and just just so thankful the cincyhat.com get yours polos as well t-shirts on the way i mean t-shirts are up t-shirts t-shirts are up t-shirts are up I, I see. I was told that they okay. I, I I saw the social post too. I wasn't sure they were up. Yeah, They're super comfy. I, I've worn mine out a few times. Haven't worn it on social yet because I didn't want to spoil the surprise. So I, I will start wearing it. But uh, we got Heather White and Vintage Black. Boom. Heather White and Vintage Black. How did you that come up the, with the those names? Those are the those are the names of the SKUs. There you go. Okay. Well, there we go. The yeah. Cincy Hat .com. He's Ted Cares. Ted, I, I appreciate the time. A lot of football this week. I think some of these chats are going to be mostly non-football. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, some football, some schedule, some some Charlie Sizzle as well, or Chuck Sizzle. So Chuck uh, Sizzle. And I'm excited. This is going to be a cool venture. I'm so glad to be partnering up with you. Thank you for this. And, and we can take it if the fans want to ask questions. I think we can kind of just organically grow this segment uh, into, into what we want. So we'll take any feedback. And I'm really excited to, you know, talk – every week for you know the upcoming season it's going to be a huge year yeah no doubt about that it certainly is i won't tell you my way too early schedule prediction you said huge year i, I won't tell you that yet at some point maybe i'll reveal that to you but uh, all right ted I, I appreciate the time hey thank you so much and we're going to talk soon that's going to do it episode one in the books hope you enjoyed it we're going to talk with ted karras all season long and I think maybe the only person more excited than me about partnering with the Cincy hat was Ted. He, he's been on me. He's like, hey, let's get this thing going. Let's get this thing going. So I, I really appreciate his time. And I think it's just going to add to what we, we bring you here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, uh, a, a, a different look uh, through a different lens uh, of the Cincinnati Bengals. We try to be as in depth as possible throughout the season. And this is another way to do that. And you'll get to know Ted. Plus, it's for a great cause. Again, you can get your hats, polos, t shirts at the cincyhat.com. 100% of the proceeds go to charity. So not only will you look great, it's great quality, but you're also supporting a great cause. So for our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller, for the cincyhat.com and Bengal Center, Ted Karras. Thank you so much for watching. I'm James Rapine, and this is Cincinnati Bengals Talk.